What's up everyone, Wolfman here, back at it again with another LEGO Star Wars review. And today I'm doing a review on the most iconic starship in the whole Star Wars universe from the from the original trilogy to the sequel and even one scene from the pre, from the prequel trilogy and it is none other than than what the title of this video is on it is on the Millennium Falcon now which version you might be asking cuz Lego Star Wars has done several different ver variants of the Millennium Falcon including two UCS sets which neither of which I have and probably won't ever have so this one's one of the smaller ones and this one is from the last, um, not the last Jedi if you're thinking, because I don't know if they did one or not. But the, but the following episode, the one from The Rise of Skywalker, and that's the version I am going to be reviewing today. Now before I get into the review, just another quick reminder of the upcoming review on the Grand Fleet, which is going to be uploaded on the 26th of this month, the month of November. That will include several ships from both Republic, Empire, First Order, Rebellion, and anything in between. That's going to be uploaded at the end of this current week. And I believe with that out of the way, without any further ado, on to the review. And here she is, set number 75257, the Millennium Falcon. This sucker was released, this version of the Falcon was released back in 2019, has 1,351 pieces, and comes with seven minifigures. Well, current, well, yeah, seven, but right now I only have six, unfortunately. The other one being D.O., which is a droid, if you can see in this photo here real quick. And, of course, the other six happen to be Landau Calrissian in his old age, in his much more older age, Chewbacca, Finn, R2-D2, C-3PO, and Bullio, if I'm pronouncing that name right. And as you can see in this photo here, as, as a close-up of these guys, both Lando and Finn, they do have Two-Face, or Double-Face, as you can see in this photo here as well. Of course, 3PO's, of course, 3PO's detailing, I think this sucker has been in several other sets, as well as R2-D2, and I forgot to mention, this set comes with two unique figures, one of which being Bulio, and the other one being Lando Calrissian, at least this version of him from the sequel trilogy. And of course, Chewbacca, his detail, I'm going to just point out the detail on Chewbacca. His detail is quite spot on. I'm actually I'm a big fan of this kind of design because the other versions of Chewbacca, especially from the original trilogy, the de they really didn't do much of detail. It was just a separate piece that was just one color. But this design on him is quite authentic, I got to say. And of course, all these guys do have pad do have... Uh, detailing in the back as you can see in this photo here along with Lando without his cape but of course R2 really doesn't because the only detail, full detailing that he does have is on his head and I'm actually quite pleased with this selection of minifigures on this even though it could do without Bulio in my personal opinion I mean, he only had like the least amount of screen time yet they were courtesy enough to do this guy some justice by having him in minifig form which I'm not really going to rag on too much, so no real complaints. It just could it could be easily make without this character, I think, anyway. So I'll move those guys out of the way and move on to the actual ship itself. Now this is actually, now, the lore behind this ship is quite well, I'd say is quite well known at this point to anyone who has followed the, the Star Wars uh, the Star Wars movies in general, especially in the original trilogy. This ship was first owned actually by Lando Calrissian who lost it to, in a game of Sabacc against Han Solo. Unfortunately he does not come with a set because at the time of the ship's release, which was for, or this version was for Episode 9, Han Solo has unfortunately died. So Lando basically gets his old ship back eventually. But this is actually, but I'm gonna be honest, this is actually my second version of the quote Millennium Falcon. The first one being the Kessel Run Falcon, which I have since changed considerably, only replacing the blue markings with maroon. I renamed that one the Raven's Halo. I wish I could show that as a comparison, but you guys will see in the Grand Fleet review. So, got that going. So, this sucker actually does, does have quite a lot of playability. And then first I'll show off the cockpit, which can be removed, like so. You can actually see two minifigures right in there. 
quite snug, I will I will say. I believe I can stick this back on my two, just like that. And of course, unlike the last version which they did, the satellite dish was a bit of a different shape, but they changed it back to its traditional circular disc design that they've done for all the other versions except for the one from The Force Awakens which had a rectangular design and quite frankly it looked a little more appealing but then again the circular gives it the, tr the old traditional look I think so it's got that going for it and of course this does have the spring-loaded missiles on both sides there I don't know if you can see the other one there and to launch those, you actually can stick your fingers in both these two holes here, which launches them. And of course, as always, I never put them in because I just might set them off. And that's just just unnecessary to me. And of course, one of the most one of the most unique features on this sucker is the gun turret on the top, which quite frankly is a bit of a standard form for the for this particular type of frigate in, Star, in the Star Wars lore. I mean, the, if anyone's wondering, this sucker is actually a YT-1300, which is quite infamous and well used, quite well used, to not shipped not by uh, not just by civilians but by smugglers and, and bounty hunters and stuff. So this ship is quite. So the type of ship here has several modifications you can actually do, and it did a few different configurations, like one design, which I want to do eventually on my other. Uh, YT-1300 is transfer the cockpit from the, from, uh, the starboard side to the port side, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, if I got that right, but I'm pretty sure I am. And of course, one of the, to me, one of the best design features is the engine here, but I'm a little critical on this design. There have been other versions of it, but given this is a bit of a, a stripped-down version, Roughly, anyways, compared to the Kessel Run Falcon, which had a, which was mo much more solid. But I think they kind of did for some of the open features on it. Since I'm basically back here, I'll just show you all some more of the designs on it. I mean, it's no, it's no UCS, but it's a, mo it's of a modest design, which I, will say again. And I think, I th oh, may I show you guys the underside of the sucker? It does have landing gear. Here, 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 and here, and it also does have the bottom gun turret as well. It does actually go through a full 360 degrees and all that jazz, just like the top one, which I'm sorry for not showing. And it does it does have the boarding ramp right there, which I'll just show off right away because it's going to be awfully annoying trying to see it from the underside if it's laying down on the ground. Oops. Ooh, that almost fell down. There. Yeah, even the turret on the top, it does go full 360, and it's on the same kind of ball joint, whatever the piece is referred to. And yeah, you can actually put a couple of mini figs in here as well. The top here opens up. Whoops. I don't have any mini figures in there now, but that's what it looks like the inside end to put mini figs in there. You just see them on this suck, on this little fun doohickey, or whatever it is. Or the platform, I should say. Just being ridiculous. And that's the inside of the ship, or the slot there where the you can put the gunners in. It just slides back in there, you can just close it off, and they can go shooting down TIE fighters and such. So, I believe that's it for the outside. Let's just pop open... Yeah, pop open the flaps here and show you guys the inside, at least in the front hull. And the design on this is actually a little more flushed out, honestly. The one for the the one for the Kessel Falcon is a little bit on the on a little bit on the tight side. I wish I could show you guys that, but I'm not really going to because of the modifications I've done on it. But there's quite a lot of iconic stuff like the the hollow chest board here in the middle, and of course you can see three figs in there quite comfortably. You got another chair right here. There's also a display in this slot here, which you really can't... Okay, now you can't see. I mean... <laughs> so there's that. And all these just close right up. 
I know the piece just came down from the bottom. But quite interestingly, the back here is much more wide open. You got a couple of beds here on this side here. You got some other decors on this side, including a box there. You got a coffee, or just a little kitchenette, basically. basically. And of course, one of the unique features this sucker has is this hatch here, which opens up. You can basically fit a minifigure in there, which is quite neat. I don't know for what reason, maybe to hide from anyone who would be sneaking on board. And of course, the boarding ramp, which is right now, basically opens up there. You can have a minifig, but then again, the space on the underside is not all that impressive. I'm, I will be honest on that. So, I don't know if there's much of anything else. I mean, this one is definitely the worthwhile set to get, especially since I hadn't got any other updated versions from the original trilogy or the sequel trilogy. The first Falcon I got was the Kesseron, which was a much more uh, fresh, stylish, and just a personalized ship for the era. But I really wanted to get a legit version of the Millennium Falcon, and I'm definitely glad I waited for this one because it comes with Lando Calrissian, and one of my, and he's quite the iconic figure. Although I wish I did get the one from oh from one of the last ones they did for the Rebellion era. That one came with Han Solo, Leia, Chewbacca, and I think even Luke and Darth Vader. But I never never even bothered getting the ones from the Force Awakens. I don't know why I didn't. Which, sadly, I never really did. But I'm glad I went for this one, because I actually like... Because this one's actually really grown on to me. And, unfortunately, I don't believe this is a set that's still available on the market today. At the at this time at the time of this recording. So, I don't really know if there really is much of availability other than trying to go online or on like, getting this set. But if anyone who is a fan of this, of this quite iconic ship definitely get it but I'm pretty certain they may do other versions sometime in the future I don't know when or even if but definitely a worthwhile set and one of the biggest pros that they actually changed was on the panels on here they actually made them pretty solid which kudos to the design to the designers just go and open them up again one of the biggest reasons happens to oh which one shoot I'm sorry one of the biggest key features that they did on making it all flush and solid, no real gaps, happen to be these um, hinge pieces that they have along the edges here. And that's how they actually did it. So they kind of lined them up a, di a different way. And it's actually they made it into three pieces instead of individual, piece, individual pairs lined up along the edges or along the ends here, as well as up in the front as well. So they really pulled through on this design. So if anyone who wants to see less gaps on their smaller version of the Falcon, definitely get this one. I mean, that's one, one of the reasons why I wanted to get this one. I mean, aside from being a much um, a more updated on the t Star Wars timeline. And plus, I really wanted to modify the other one, the other one that I have. So I really can't. I really don't know the. I don't know. If there's really much for me to say on this. So I would say that'd be my review. So that was my review on the Millennium Falcon from the Rise of Skywalker. And if you liked that video, and if you made it to the end of this video, please feel free to leave a like and leave a comment. I'd like to hear some feedback from anyone who will come along this channel somewhere along the timeline eventually. <laughs> And if you and if you happen to be new here at this at the time of after this upload, then come join the wolf pack by hitting the red subscribe button down below for more content like this for as long as they're gonna keep going anyways. And definitely tune in to seeing the Grand Fleet review, because there are several different starships from the from from many of the different factions in the Star Wars timeline from the prequel trilogy to the sequel trilogy so there's a lot of starships of different eras that are going to be in this review and I don't think that I think that is going to be it for this video so all that stuff for me to remind you that Jesus loves you more than Elmo and Barney does and I'll see you guys next time